What's up guys, Rogue9 here and welcome to my series on Rainbow Six Siege. The closed beta test has been running for about a week now and in the upcoming series of videos I'll be showing off the features of the game so far and giving you my impressions. In this video I'll be giving you an overview of the sidearms available to you in the game. Let's kick things off with the guns used by the SAS. The original P226 was designed in 1984 and is manufactured by Sig Sauer. The Mark 25 version of the game was released in 2011 and is advertised by Sig Sauer as being the model used by the Navy SEALs. This actually also happens to be my favourite sidearm of the game. Its damage rating of 53 makes it one of the most powerful pistols available, while its clip size of 15 still gives you plenty of ammunition to work with. The fire rate and mobility are the same for all pistols in the game. The fire rate is semi-automatic and the mobility is the best possible, a level 0. The second SAS sidearm featured in the game is the Mac 11 which was designed in 1972 and is produced by the Military Armament Corporation. Instead of using the actual designation for the weapon, Ubisoft have gone with SMG-11 instead, which is a weapon that was featured in Watch Dogs. This again is a sidearm that I quite like, even though its damage rating of 34 makes it the weakest in the game, its fire rate of 1270 rounds per minute currently makes it the only full automatic sidearm in the beta. Its mobility rating of 2 makes it slightly worse than all the other pistols, but only by a small margin, and its clip size of 16, although kind of average, means that you can run out of ammunition quite quickly if you decide to let loose. Next up, we're going to check out the FBI SWAT sidearms, and first of all we have the M45 MUSOC. In use since 1985, this weapon was based off the original M1911 designed by John Browning, and it has been the standard issue sidearm for the Force Recon element of the US Marine Expeditionary Units since it first became available. A damage rating of 50 makes this one of the most powerful pistols in the game, but the clip size of only 7 bullets means you'll run out of ammunition very quickly. I'm not a great fan of this weapon and I don't think that the reasonably high damage actually justifies the lack of ammunition. And as you can see from this engagement, I'm really struggling to deal with the enemies. Having said that though, the weapon does return to its original aim point quite quickly after firing a shot, which is not something you can say for all of the powerful pistols. The second sidearm available to FBI SWAT operatives is the 5.7 USG, introduced in 1998 by Belgian weapons manufacturer FN Herstal. This weapon, much like the P90, uses the unusual pistol caliber of 5.7x28mm. These relatively small pistol bullets have a high velocity, high penetrating power and at the same time very low recoil. In the game this pistol distinguishes itself by a fairly low power of 38 but a high clip size of 20 bullets. Despite its apparent lack of power, I've found this weapon to be quite effective, uh, especially at long range engagements like this one. The French Special Police Unit GIGN has access to the game's most powerful handgun, the Smith & Wesson 586. This classic revolver was first introduced in 1980 by, you guessed it, Smith & Wesson. Chambered in 357 Magnum in real life, the in-game version packs a 64-point damage punch. The flip side is that with only 6 bullets, this pistol has the lowest amount of ammunition in the game. If you want to be effective with this weapon, you really have to make every shot count, and the high recoil and long time to return to the point of aim make this quite difficult. It can certainly get the job done, but as you can probably tell, I'm not a huge fan. The second sidearm that the GIGN have access to is the FNP9. This is a fairly modern pistol and was released by FN Herstal in 2006. Sometimes known as the Browning Pro 9 in the US, this pistol causes 40 damage and has a clip size of 16. 
I keep saying clip size because that's what the game calls it. But really, all of these weapons except for the revolver are magazine fed. It's fairly average amount of ammunition and damage that is only just on the low side make this a fairly well balanced weapon. Nothing outstanding, but more than enough to get the job done. If you prefer playing as the Russian Spetsnaz, you will have access to the PMM. This is a 1990 update of the original Makarov pistol, designed in 1948 by Nikolai Fyodorovich Makarov. This gun uses the 9x18mm Makarov round and in its most modern incarnations can hold 10 or 12 round magazines. In the game this is the second most powerful pistol with a damage of 58 and a magazine of 8 bullets. Its low recoil and high controllability make this a very effective gun in close range combat. Its high power also gives you the option of picking off your targets with single shots from long distance. 8 bullets doesn't give you a lot of margin for error, but I like the gun anyway. If you prefer a more modern approach, how about the GSH-18, released in 2000? And it was designed by, as the name of the pistol hints at... Uh, okay, um... Gryatsev and Shiponov. Yeah, I guess that's close enough. It fires the standard 9x19mm Parabellum ammunition, and again, as the name suggests, has a magazine capacity of 18 bullets. This gives it the second highest magazine capacity of any handgun in the game, and its damage of 42 is only just below average. If you're in a tight spot and your primary weapon runs out of ammo, don't worry, your sidearm has plenty to go round. Even charging bombers can be taken care of. When in doubt, just keep pulling that trigger. This gun makes the perfect accompaniment to the machine gun. Since the machine gun is so slow to reload, you will quite frequently need to rely on your backup to take care of business. And last but not least, we come to the Heckler & Koch P12 pistol used by the GSG 9. P12 being the German military designation for the Heckler & Koch USP Tactical, which is a variation of the original model released in 1993 and designed by Helmut Weltler. With in-game damage of 48 and a magazine size of 15, the weapon is above average in both of the main stats. And even though it does not quite reach the level of excellence of the P226, it's still one of the best sidearms available. As of the current closed beta testing, this is also the only sidearm available to the GSG-9 units. This is not an issue though, since the weapon is top class and you don't really need anything else. So there we have it. I hope this overview of all the sidearms currently available in Rainbow Six has been interesting and informative to you. And just as a recap, I've listed them again in order of my personal preference. The P226 is by far the most useful and effective sidearm in the game, while the Smith & Wesson 586 and the M45 might be powerful, but they're just not controllable enough, and their lack of ammunition makes them really ineffective. At least that's my opinion. Your personal preference might be different, of course. I hear that people who click the like button on YouTube at least once a day lead happier lives. Why not go and give it a click now? And with that, all that remains to be said is I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next episode.